The Gospel of Matthew, a condensed version. The first 17 verses of the book outline the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah. It's a long list of names that link Jesus to Abraham and David, reveal the role of women, and highlight that the Bible story is made of true events. This is how Jesus Christ was born. His mother Mary was engaged to Joseph, but before the marriage took place, she found herself to be pregnant by the power of the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, was a just man. And, since he did not want to disgrace her publicly, he resolved to put an end to their engagement privately. He had been thinking this over when an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary for your wife, for her child has been conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son. Name him Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. All this happened in fulfilment of these words of the Lord through the prophet, where he says, The virgin will conceive and will give birth to a son, and they will give him the name Emmanuel, a word which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord had directed him. He made Mary his wife, but they did not sleep together before the birth of her son. And to this son, he gave the name Jesus. In chapter 2, the wise men visit the baby Jesus and are warned not to return to Herod. Joseph was also warned about Herod in a dream and so escaped to Egypt. After Herod's death, the family return and eventually settle in Nazareth. Chapter 3 About that time, John the Baptist first appeared, proclaiming in the wilderness of Judea, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John was the one who was spoken of in the prophet Isaiah, where he says, The voice of one crying aloud in the wilderness, Make ready the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, with a leather strap around his waist and his food was locusts and wild honey. At that time, Jerusalem and all Judea, as well as the whole district of the Jordan, went out to him and were baptised by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. But when John saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to receive his baptism, he said to them, You children of snakes! Who has prompted you to seek refuge from the coming judgment? Let your life, then, prove your repentance, and do not think that you can say amongst yourselves, Abraham is our ancestor, for I tell you that out of these stones God is able to raise descendants for Abraham. Already the axe is lying at the root of the trees, therefore every tree that fails to bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I, indeed, baptise you with water to teach repentance, but he who is coming after me is more powerful than I, and I am not fit even to carry his sandals. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and store his grain in the barn, but the chaff he will burn with a fire that cannot be put out. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan, to John to be baptised by him. But John tried to prevent him. I need to be baptised by you, he said. So why have you come to me? This is the way it should be for now, Jesus answered, because we should do everything that God requires. So John agreed. After the baptism of Jesus, and just as he came up from the water, the heavens opened. And he saw the Spirit of God coming down like a dove and resting on him. And from the heavens there came a voice which said, This is my dearly loved Son, who brings me great joy. Chapter 4 
Then Jesus was led up into the wilderness by the Spirit to be tempted by the devil. And after he had fasted for forty days and forty nights, he became hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are God's son, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, Scripture says, It is not on bread alone that a person is to live, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city, and placing him on the parapet of the temple, said to him, If you are God's son, throw yourself down, for Scripture says, He will give his angels commands about you, and on their hands they will lift you up, so you do not even strike your foot against a stone. Scripture also says, answered Jesus, you must not tempt the Lord your God. The third time, the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain, and showing him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor, said to him, All these I will give you, if you will fall at my feet and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Go away, Satan, for scripture says, You must worship the Lord your God and worship him only. Then the devil left him alone, and the angels came and helped him. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he returned to Galilee. Afterward, leaving Nazareth, he went and settled at Capernaum, which is by the side of the sea, within the borders of Zebulun and Naphtali, in fulfilment of these words in the prophet Isaiah. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, the land of the road by the sea and beyond the Jordan, with Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who were living in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who were living in the shadow land of death, a light has dawned. At that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Come and follow me, Jesus said, and I will teach you to fish for people. The two men left their nets at once and followed him. Going further on, he saw two other men who were also brothers, James, Zebedee's son, and his brother John, in their boat with their father, mending their nets. Jesus called them, and they at once left their boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went all through Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness amongst the people. And his fame spread all through Syria. They brought to him all who were ill with any form of disease, or who were suffering pain, any who were either possessed by demons, or were lunatic, or paralysed, and he cured them. He was followed by large crowds from Galilee, the district of the Ten Towns, Jerusalem, Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. Chapter 5 On seeing the crowds of people, Jesus went up the hill, and, when he had taken his seat, his disciples came up to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the mourners, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will find mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted in the cause of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil lies about you because of me. Be glad and rejoice, because your reward in heaven will be great. This is the way they persecuted the prophets who lived before you. 
Jesus continues to teach, giving advice on matters such as doing good deeds, the law, anger, adultery, divorce, oaths and retribution. He adds words on love for enemies. You have heard that it was said, you must love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But what I tell you is this, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may become children of your Father who is in heaven. For he causes his Son to rise on bad and good alike, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love only those who love you, what reward will you have? Even the tax gatherers do this. And if you only welcome your brothers and sisters, what are you doing more than others? Even the Gentiles do this. You then must become perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. In chapters 6 and 7, the tireless teaching continues. Subjects covered include giving to the needy, prayer, fasting, judging others and being wise. By the time that Jesus had finished speaking, the crowd was filled with amazement at his teaching, for he taught them like one who had authority and not like their teachers of the law. Chapter 8 When Jesus had come down from the hill, great crowds followed him. He saw a leper who came up and bowed to the ground before him and said, Master, if only you are willing, you are able to make me clean. Stretching out his hand, Jesus touched him, saying as he did so, I am willing, become clean. Instantly, he was made clean from his leprosy. And then Jesus said to him, Be careful not to say a word to anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest and offer the gift directed by Moses as evidence of your cure. After Jesus had entered Capernaum, a captain in the Roman army came up to him, entreating his help. Sir, he said, my manservant is lying ill at my house with a stroke of paralysis and is suffering terribly. I will come and cure him, answered Jesus. Sir, the captain went on, I am unworthy to receive you under my roof, but only speak, and my manservant will be cured, for I myself am a man under the orders of others, with soldiers under me, and if I say to one of them, Go, he goes, and to another, Come, he comes, and to my slave, Do this, he does it. Jesus was surprised to hear this, and said to those who were following him, Never, I tell you, in any Israelite have I met with such faith as this. Yes, and many will come in from east and west and take their places beside Abraham, Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the heirs to the kingdom will be banished into the darkness outside. There, there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. Then Jesus said to the captain, Go now, and it will be according to your faith. And the man was cured that very hour. When Jesus went into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law prostrated with fever. On his taking her hand, the fever left her, and she rose and began to take care of him. In the evening, the people brought to Jesus many who were possessed by demons, and he drove out the spirits with a word and cured all who were ill, in fulfilment of these words in the prophet Isaiah. He took our infirmities on himself and bore the burden of our diseases. Seeing a crowd around him, Jesus gave orders to go across. A teacher of the law came up to him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Foxes have holes, answered Jesus, and wild birds their nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Master, said another, who was a disciple. Let me first go and bury my father. But Jesus answered, Follow me and leave the dead to bury their dead. Then he got into the boat, followed by his disciples. Suddenly, so great a storm came up on the sea 
that the waves broke right over the boat. But Jesus was asleep, and the disciples came and roused him. Master, they cried, save us, we are lost. Why are you so timid, he said. You have little faith. Then Jesus rose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and a great calm followed. The men were amazed and exclaimed, What kind of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? On getting to the other side, the region of the Gardenese, Jesus met two men who were possessed by demons coming out of the tombs. They were so violent that no one was able to pass that way. Suddenly, they shrieked out, What do you want with us, Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before our time? A long way off, there was a drove of many pigs feeding, and the foul spirits began begging Jesus, If you drive us out, send us into the drove of pigs. Go, he said. The spirits came out and entered the pigs, and the whole drove rushed down the steep slope into the sea and died in the water. At this, the men who tended them ran away and went to the town, carrying the news of all that had occurred and of what happened to the possessed men. At the news, the whole town went out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they entreated him to go away from their region. Chapter 9 Afterward, Jesus got into a boat, and crossing over, came to his own city. There, some people brought to him a paralysed man on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, Courage, child, your sins are forgiven. Then some of the teachers of the law said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus exclaimed, Why do you cherish such wicked thoughts? Which, I ask, is the easier, to say, Your sins are forgiven? or to say, get up and walk, but to show you that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralyzed man, Get up, take your bed, and return to your home. The man got up and went to his home. When the crowd saw this, they were awestruck and praised God for giving such power to human beings. As Jesus went along, he saw a man called Matthew, sitting in the tax office, and said to him, Follow me. Matthew got up and followed him. And later on, when he was having dinner in the house, a number of tax gatherers and outcasts came in and took their places at the table with Jesus and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat in the company of tax gatherers and outcasts? On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not those who are healthy who need a doctor, but those who are ill. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the religious, but the outcast. Then John's disciples came to Jesus and asked, Why do we and the Pharisees fast while your disciples do not? Jesus answered, can the groom's friends mourn as long as the groom is with them? But the days will come when the groom will be taken away from them, and they will fast then. Nobody ever puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for such a patch tears away from the garment, and a worse tear is made. Nor do people put new wine into old wineskins, for if they do, the skins burst, and the wine runs out, and the skins are lost but they put new wine into fresh skins, and so both are preserved. While Jesus was saying this, a synagogue leader came up and bowed to the ground before him. My daughter, he said, has just died, but come and place your hand on her, and she will be restored to life. So Jesus rose and followed him, and his disciples went also. But meanwhile, a woman, who had been suffering from hemorrhage for twelve years, came up behind and touched the tassel of his cloak. If I only touch his cloak, she said to herself, I will get well. 
turning and seeing her, Jesus said, Courage, daughter, your faith has delivered you. And at that very moment, she became well. When Jesus reached the leader's house, seeing the flute players and a number of people all in confusion, he said, Go away. The little girl is not dead. She is asleep. They began to laugh at him. But when the people had been sent out, Jesus went in and took the little girl's hand and she rose. The report of this spread through all that part of the country. As Jesus was passing on from there, he was followed by two blind men who kept calling out, Take pity on us, son of David. When he had gone indoors, the blind men came up to him and Jesus asked them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? Yes, master, they answered. Then he touched their eyes and said, It will be according to your faith. Then their eyes were opened. Jesus sternly cautioned them, See that no one knows of it, he said. But the men went out and spread the news about him through all that part of the country. Just as they were going out, some people brought up to Jesus a dumb man who was possessed by a demon. And as soon as the demon had been driven out, the dumb man spoke. The people were astonished at this and exclaimed, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He drives out the demons by the help of the chief of the demons. Jesus went around all the towns and the villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. But when he saw the crowds, his heart was moved with compassion for them, because they were distressed and harassed like sheep without a shepherd. And he said to his disciples, The harvest is abundant, but the labourers are few. Therefore, pray to the owner of the harvest to send labourers to gather in his harvest. In chapter 10, Jesus sends out the twelve, telling them to go rather to the lost sheep of Israel, to go out like sheep among wolves. Jesus was giving the disciples authority to perform miracles and wisdom to preach confidently. Jesus praises John in chapter 11 as being the greatest to be born of a woman, but he quickly devalues the praise by saying the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John, a blow to anyone's ego. Jesus compares John's style to his own and how the people balked at both. John was too radical, they thought, the son of man too common. People are never satisfied, but wisdom is shown to be right by what it does. The Pharisees have set Jesus up in chapter 12. A man with a withered hand is present, and they ask Jesus if it is lawful to heal on the Sabbath. Jesus again emphasises mercy and insists it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. So he heals the man. Rather than learning and repenting, the Pharisees deepen their conspiracy to destroy Jesus. Chapter 13 That same day, when Jesus had left the house and was sitting by the sea, such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the beach. Then he told them many truths in parables. The sower, he began, went out to sow, and, as they were sowing, some seed fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places, where it had not much soil, and because the soil wasn't deep, sprang up at once. As soon as the sun had risen, it was scorched, and because their roots were not deep enough, withered away. Some, again, fell into the brambles, but the brambles shot up and choked it. Some, however, fell on good soil and yielded a return, sometimes one hundred, sometimes sixty, sometimes thirtyfold. Let those who have ears hear. Afterward, his disciples came to him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? 
to you, answered Jesus. The knowledge of the hidden truths of the kingdom of heaven has been imparted, but not to those. For to all who have, more will be given, and they will have abundance. But from all who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. That is why I speak to them in parables, because though they have eyes, they do not see, and though they have ears, they do not hear or understand. In them is being fulfilled that prophecy of Isaiah, which says, You will hear with your ears without ever understanding, and though you have eyes, you will see without ever perceiving. For the mind of this nation has grown dense, and their ears are dull of hearing, their eyes also have they closed. Otherwise some day they might perceive with their eyes, and with their ears they might hear, and in their mind they might understand, and might turn, and I might heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For I tell you that many prophets and good people have longed for the sight of the things which you are seeing, yet never saw them, and to hear the things which you are hearing, yet never heard them. Listen then yourselves to the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the message of the kingdom without understanding it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in their mind. This is the person meant by the seed which was sown along the path. By the seed which was sown on rocky places is meant the person who hears the message and at once accepts it joyfully. But, as they have no root, they stand for only a short time, and when trouble or persecution arises because of the message, they fall away at once. By the seed which was sown amongst the brambles is meant the person who hears the message, but the cares of life and the glamour of wealth completely choke the message, so that it gives no return. But by the seed which was sown on the good ground is meant the person who hears the message and understands it and really yields a return, sometimes 100, sometimes 60, sometimes 30 fold. Another parable which Jesus told them was this. The kingdom of heaven is compared to a person who sowed good seed in their field. But while everyone was asleep, their enemy came and sowed weeds amongst the wheat and then went away. So when the blades of corn shot up and came into ear, the weeds made their appearance also. The owner's servants came to them and said, Was not it good seed that you sowed in your field? Where then do the weeds in it come from? An enemy has done this, was the owner's answer. Do you wish us then, they asked, to go and gather them together? No, he said, because while you are pulling up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow side by side until harvest. And then I will say to the reapers, gather the weeds together first and tie them in bundles for burning, but bring all the wheat into my barn. Another parable which he told them was this. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a person took and sowed in his field. This seed is smaller than all other seeds, but when it has grown up, it is larger than the herbs and becomes a tree, so that the wild birds come and roost in its branches. This was another parable which Jesus related. The kingdom of heaven is like some yeast, which a woman took and covered up in three pecks of flour, until the whole had risen. Of all this, Jesus spoke to the crowd in parables. Indeed, to them, he used never to speak at all except in parables in fulfilment of these words in the prophet. I will speak to them in parables. I will utter things kept secret since the foundation of the world. Then Jesus left the crowd and went into the house. Presently, his disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The sower of the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. By the good seed is meant the people of his kingdom. The weeds are the wicked, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest time is the close of the age, and the reapers are angels. 
and just as the weeds are gathered and burnt, so it will be at the close of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather from the kingdom all that hinders and those who live in sin, and will throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. Then will the righteous shine, like the sun, in the kingdom of their Father. If you have ears, listen. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a person found and hid again, and then, in their delight, went and sold everything that they had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of choice pearls. Finding one of great value, they went and sold everything that they had and bought it. Or again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net which was cast into the sea and caught fish of all kinds. When it was full, they hauled it upon the beach and sat down and sorted the good fish into baskets, but threw the worthless ones away. So will it be at the close of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and will throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. Have you understood all this? Jesus asked. Yes, they answered. Then he added, So every teacher of the law who has received instruction about the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who produces from his stores things both new and old. When Jesus had finished these parables, he withdrew from that place. Going to his own part of the country, he taught the people in their synagogue in such a manner that they were deeply impressed. Where did he get this wisdom? he said, and the miracles. Isn't he the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother called Mary and his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And his sisters too, are they not all living amongst us? Where then did he get all this? These things proved a hindrance to their believing in him. But Jesus said, A prophet is not without honour except in his own country and in his own house. He did not work many miracles there because of their want of faith. Chapter 14 At that time, Prince Herod heard of the fame of Jesus and said to his attendants, This must be John the Baptist. He must be risen from the dead, and that is why these miraculous powers are active in him. For Herod had arrested John, put him in chains, and shut him up in prison to please Herodias, the wife of Herod's brother Philip. For John had said to him, You have no right to be living with her. Yet, though Herod wanted to put him to death, he was afraid of the people, because they looked on John as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday came, the daughter of Herodias danced before his guests, and so pleased Herod that he promised with an oath to give her whatever she asked. Prompted by her mother, the girl said, Give me here, on a dish, the head of John the Baptist. The king was distressed at this, yet, because of his oath and of the guests at his table, he ordered it to be given her. He had John beheaded in the prison, and his head was brought on a dish and given to the girl, and she took it to her mother. Then John's disciples came and took the body away and buried it and went and told Jesus. When Jesus heard of it, he left privately in a boat to a lonely spot. The people, however, heard of his going and followed him in crowds from the towns on foot. On getting out of the boat, Jesus saw a great crowd and his heart was moved at the sight of them. And he cured all the sick amongst them. In the evening, the disciples came up to him and said, This is a lonely spot, and the day is now far advanced. Send the crowds away so that they can go to the villages and buy themselves food. But Jesus said, They need not go away. It is for you to give them something to eat. We have nothing here, they said, except five loaves and two fish. Bring them here to me, was his reply. Jesus ordered the people 
to take their seats on the grass. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said the blessing. And after he had broken the loaves, gave them to his disciples, and they gave them to the crowds. Everyone had sufficient to eat, and they picked up enough of the broken pieces that were left to fill twelve baskets. The men who ate were about five thousand in number, without counting women and children. Immediately afterward, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and cross over in advance of him, while he dismissed the crowds. After dismissing the crowds, he went up the hill by himself to pray, and when evening fell, he was there alone. The boat was by this time some miles from shore, labouring in the waves, for the wind was against her. Three hours after midnight, however, Jesus came towards the disciples, walking on the water. But when they saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they exclaimed, and cried out in fear. But Jesus at once spoke to them. Courage, he said, it is I. Do not be afraid. Master, Peter exclaimed, if it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. So Peter got down from the boat and walked on the water and went toward Jesus. But when he felt the wind, he was frightened and beginning to sink, cried out, Master, save me. Instantly, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught hold of him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you falter? When they had got into the boat, the wind dropped. But the men in the boat threw themselves on their faces before him and said, You are indeed God's son. When they had crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret. But the people of that place, recognising Jesus, sent out to the whole country around and brought to him all who were ill begging him merely to let them touch the tassel of his cloak. And all who touched were made perfectly well. Chapter 15 concludes the narrative about Jesus' ministry in Galilee. Peter soon declares that Jesus is the Messiah, as Jesus predicts his own death. Chapter 17 Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and the brothers James and John and led them up a high mountain alone. There his appearance was transformed before their eyes. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. All at once, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with Jesus. Master, exclaimed Peter, interposing, it is good to be here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them, and there was a voice from the cloud that said, This is my dearly loved son, who brings me great joy. Listen to him. The disciples, on hearing this, fell on their faces, greatly afraid. But Jesus came and touched them saying as he did so, Rise up, and do not be afraid. When they raised their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus himself alone. As they were going down the mountainside, Jesus gave them this warning, Do not speak of this vision to anyone, until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. How is it, his disciples asked, that our teachers of the law say that Elijah has to come first? Elijah indeed does come, Jesus replied, and will restore everything. And I tell you that Elijah has already come, and people have not recognised him, but have treated him just as they pleased. In the same way, too, the Son of Man is destined to undergo suffering at people's hands. Then the disciples understood that it was of John the Baptist that he had spoken to them. When they came to the crowd, a man came up to Jesus and, kneeling down before him, said, Master, take pity on my son, for he is epileptic and suffers terribly. 
Indeed, he often falls into the fire, into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Faithless and perverse generation, Jesus exclaimed. How long must I be amongst you? How long must I have patience with you? Bring the boy here to me. Then Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of the boy, and he was cured from that very hour. Afterward, the disciples came up to Jesus and asked him privately, Why was it that we could not drive it out? Because you have so little faith, he answered. For I tell you, if your faith were only like a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, Move from this place to that, and it would be moved, and nothing would be impossible to you. While Jesus and his disciples were together in Galilee, he said to them, The Son of Man is destined to be betrayed into human hands, and they will put him to death. But on the third day he will rise. The disciples were greatly distressed. After they had reached Capernaum, the collectors of the temple rate came up to Peter and said, Does not your master pay the temple rate? Yes answered Peter. But, on going into the house, before he could speak, Jesus said, What do you think, Simon? From whom do earthly kings take taxes or tribute? From their sons, or from others? From others, answered Peter. Well then, continued Jesus, their sons go free. Still, so we don't offend them, go and throw a line into the sea. Take the first fish that rises, Open its mouth, and you will find in it a piece of money. Take that and give it to the collectors for both of us. Chapter 18 On the same occasion, the disciples came to Jesus and asked him, Who is really the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a little child to him, and placed it in the middle of them, and then said, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven at all. Therefore, anyone who will humble themselves like this child, that person will be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And anyone who, for the sake of my name, welcomes even one little child like this, is welcoming me. But if anyone puts temptation in the way of one of these little children who believe in me, it would be best for them to be sunk in the depths of the sea with a great millstone hung around their neck. Alas for the world because of such temptations. There cannot but be temptations, but sorrow awaits the person who does the tempting. If your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It would be better for you to enter the life maimed or lame than to have both hands or both feet and be thrown into the fire that never goes out. If your eye causes you to sin, take it out and throw it away. It would be better for you to enter the life with only one eye than to have both eyes and be thrown into the fire of Gehenna. Beware of despising one of these little ones. For in heaven, I tell you, their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. What think you? If a person owns a hundred sheep, and one of them strays, will the person not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go and search for the one that is straying? And if they succeed in finding it, I tell you that they rejoice more over that one sheep than over the ninety-nine which did not stray. So too, it is the will of my Father, who is in heaven, that not one of these little ones should be lost. If your brother or sister does wrong, go to them and convince them of their fault when you are both alone. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they do not listen to you, take with you one or two others, so that on the evidence of two or three witnesses, every word may be put beyond dispute. If they refuse to listen to them, speak to the church. And if they also refuse to listen to the church, Treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. I tell you, 
All that you forbid on earth will be held in heaven to be forbidden, and all that you allow on earth will be held in heaven to be allowed. Again, I tell you that if but two of you on earth agree as to what they will pray for, whatever it will be, it will be granted them by my Father who is in heaven. For where two or three have come together in my name, I am present with them. Then Peter came up and said to Jesus, Master, how often am I to forgive someone who wrongs me? As many as seven times? But Jesus answered, Not seventy times, but seventy times seven. Therefore the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wishes to settle accounts with his servants. When he had begun to do so, one of them was brought to him, who owed him ten thousand bags of gold. And as he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold towards the payment of the debt, together with his wife and his children and everything that he had. The servant threw himself down on the ground before him and said, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. The master was moved with compassion, and he let him go and forgave him the debt. But on going out, that same servant came upon one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. Seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe me. His fellow servant threw himself on the ground and begged for mercy. Have patience with me, he said, and I will pay you. But the other would not, but went and put him in prison until he should pay his debt. When his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went to their master and laid the whole matter before him. So the master sent for the servant, and said to him, You wicked servant, when you begged me for mercy, I forgave you the whole of that debt. Shouldn't you also to have shown mercy to your fellow servant, just as I showed mercy to you? Then his master, in anger, handed him over to the jailers, until he should pay the whole of his debt. So also will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each one of you forgives his brother or sister from your heart. In chapter 21, Jesus arrives in Jerusalem as king. Chapter 21 When they had almost reached Jerusalem, having come as far as Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent on two disciples. Go to the village facing you, he said and you will immediately find an ass tethered with a foal by her side. Untie her, and lead her here for me. And if anyone says anything to you, you are to say this, The Master wants them, and he will send them at once. This happened in fulfilment of these words in the prophet. Say to the people of Zion, Your king is coming to you, gentle, and riding on an ass, and on the foal of a beast of burden. So the disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They led the ass and the foal back, and when they had put their cloaks on them, he seated himself on them. The immense crowd of people spread their cloaks in the road, while some cut branches off the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that led the way, as well as those that followed behind, kept shouting, God save the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! God save him from on high. When he had entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? To which the crowd replied, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus went into the temple courts and drove out all those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of the pigeon dealers and said to them, Scripture says, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. While he was still in the temple courts, some blind and some lame people came up to him, and he cured them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things that Jesus did, and the boys who were calling out in the temple courts, God save the son of David, they were indignant and said to him, Do you hear what these boys are saying? Yes, answered Jesus, 
But did you never read the words? Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings you have called forth perfect praise. Then he left them and went out of the city to Bethany and spent the night there. The next morning, in returning to the city, Jesus became hungry. And noticing a solitary fig tree by the roadside, he went up to it, but found nothing on it but leaves. He said to it, Never again will fruit be gathered off you. And suddenly the fruit tree withered up. When the disciples saw this, they exclaimed in astonishment, How suddenly the fig tree withered up! I tell you, replied Jesus, if you have faith without ever a doubt, you will do what not only what has been done to the fig tree, but even if you should say to the hill, Be lifted up and hurled into the sea, it would be done. And whatever you ask for in your prayers will, if you have faith, be granted you. After Jesus had come into the temple courts, the chief priests and the elders of the people came up to him as he was teaching and said, What authority have you to do these things? Who gave you this authority? I too, said Jesus in reply, will ask you one question. If you will give me an answer to it, then I also will tell you what authority I have to act as I do. It is about John's baptism. What was its origin, divine or human? But they began arguing amongst themselves. If we say divine, he will say to us, why then didn't you believe him? But if we say human, we are afraid of the people, for everyone regards John as a prophet. So the answer they gave Jesus was, We do not know. Then I, he said, refuse to tell you what authority I have to do these things. What do you think of this? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the elder and said, Go and work in the vineyard today, my son. Yes, sir, he answered, but he did not go. Then the father went to the second son and said the same. I will not, he answered. But afterward, he was sorry and went. Which of these two sons did as the father wished? The second, they said. I tell you, added Jesus, that tax gatherers and prostitutes are going into the kingdom of heaven before you. For when John came to you, walking in the path of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax gatherers and prostitutes did. And yet you, though you saw this, even then were not sorry, nor did you believe him. Listen to another parable. A man, who was an employer, once planted a vineyard, put a fence round it, dug a wine press in it, built a tower, and then left it out to tenants and went abroad. When the time for the grape harvest drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to receive his share of the produce. But the tenants seized his servants, beat one, killed another and stoned a third. A second time, the owner sent some servants, a larger number than before, and the tenants treated them in the same way. As a last resort, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But the tenants, on seeing his son, said to each other, Here is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him and threw him outside the vineyard and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? Miserable wretches, they exclaimed. He will put them to a miserable death, and he will let out the vineyard to other tenants, who will pay him his share of the produce at the proper times. Then Jesus added, Have you never read in the scriptures, the stone which the builders despised has now itself become the cornerstone? This cornerstone has come from the Lord and is marvellous in our eyes. That, I tell you, is why the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation that does produce the fruit of the kingdom. Yes, and he who falls on this stone will be dashed to pieces, while anyone on whom it falls, it will scatter him as dust. After listening to these parables, the chief priests and the Pharisees saw that it was about them that he was speaking. Yet, although eager to arrest him, they were afraid of the crowds who regarded him 
as a prophet. Jesus' teaching continues. Hypocrisy, signs of the end times and more parables. After the Last Supper, Jesus predicts Peter's denial and visits the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. And while he was still speaking, Judas, who was one of the twelve, came in sight. And with him was a great crowd of people with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The man whom I kiss, he had said, will be the one. Arrest him. So he went up to Jesus at once and exclaimed, Welcome, Rabbi, and kissed him. At which Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you have come for. The men went up, seized Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and striking the high priest's servant, cut off his ear. Sheathe your sword, Jesus said, for all who draw the sword will be put to the sword. Do you think that I cannot ask my father for help? when he would at once send to my aid more than twelve legions of angels. But in that case, how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that this must be? Jesus, at the same time, said to the crowds, Have you come out as if after a robber with swords and clubs to take me? I have sat teaching day after day in the temple courts, and yet you did not arrest me. The whole of this occurred, in fulfilment of the prophetic scriptures. Then the disciples all forsook him and fled. Jesus is taken before the Sanhedrin and also the governor Pontius Pilate. Pilate questions Jesus, releases Barabbas and sentences Jesus Christ to be crucified. In fulfilment of prophecy, Jesus is then scourged, mocked, crucified and buried in the tomb of the wealthy Joseph of Arimathea. Chapter 27 At daybreak, all the chief priests and the elders of the people consulted together against Jesus to bring about his death. They put him in chains and led him away, and gave him up to the Roman governor, Pilate. Then Judas, who betrayed him, seeing that Jesus was condemned, repented of what he had done, and returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. I did wrong in betraying a good man to his death, he said. What has this to do with us? they replied. You must see to that yourself. Judas flung down the pieces of silver in the temple and left. He went away and hanged himself. The chief priests took the pieces of silver, but they said, we must not put them into the temple treasury, because they are blood money. So, after consultation, they bought with them the potter's field for a burial ground for foreigners. And that is why that field is called the field of blood to this very day. Then it was that these words spoken by the prophet Jeremiah were fulfilled. They took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him who is valued, whom some of the people of Israel valued, and gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Meanwhile, Jesus was brought before the Roman governor. Are you the king of the Jews? asked the governor. It is true, answered Jesus. While charges were being brought against him by the chief priests and elders, Jesus made no reply. Then Pilate said to him, Don't you hear how many accusations they are making against you? Yet Jesus made no reply, not even a single word, at which the governor was greatly astonished. Now, at the feast, the governor was accustomed to grant the people the release of any one prisoner whom they might choose. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when the people had collected, Pilate said to them, Which do you wish me to release for you, Barabbas? or Jesus, who is called Christ. For he knew that it was out of jealousy that they had given Jesus up to him. While he was still on the bench, his wife sent this message to him. 
Do not have anything to do with that good man, for I have been very unhappy today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to kill Jesus. The governor, however, said to them, Which of these two do you wish me to release for you? Barabbas, they answered. What then, Pilate asked, should I do with Jesus who is called Christ? Crucify him, they all replied. Why, what harm has he done, he asked. But they kept shouting furiously, Crucify him! When Pilate saw that his efforts were unavailing, but that, on the contrary, a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying as he did so, I am not answerable for this bloodshed. You must see to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood be on our heads and on our children's. Pilate released Barabbas to them, but Jesus he scourged and gave him up to be crucified. After that, the governor's soldiers took Jesus with them into the government house and gathered the whole garrison around him. They stripped him and put on him a red military cloak, and having twisted some thorns into a crown, put it on his head and a rod in his right hand, and then, going down on their knees before him, they mocked him. Long life to you, king of the Jews, they said. They spat at him, and taking the rod, kept striking him on the head. And when they had left off mocking him, they took off the military cloak and put his own clothes on him and led him away to be crucified. As they were on their way out, they came upon a man from Cyrene of the name of Simon, and they compelled him to go with them to carry the cross. On reaching a place named Golgotha, a place named from its likeness to a skull, they gave him some wine to drink, which had been mixed with gall. But after tasting it, Jesus refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided his clothes amongst them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. Above his head, they fixed the accusation against him written out, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. At the same time, two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right, the other on the left. The passers-by railed at him, shaking their heads as they said, you who destroy the temple and build one in three days, save yourself. If you are God's son, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, with the teachers of the law and elders, said in mockery, He saved others, but he cannot save himself. He is king of Israel. Why doesn't he come down from the cross now? Then we will believe in him. He has trusted in God. If God wants him, let him deliver him now, for he said, I am God's son. Even the robbers who were crucified with him insulted him in the same way. After midday, a darkness came over all the country, lasting until three in the afternoon. About three, Jesus called out loudly, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, that is to say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those standing by heard this and said, The man is calling for Elijah. One of them immediately ran and took a sponge and filling it with common wine, put it on the end of a rod and offered it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, and let us see if Elijah is coming to save him. But Jesus uttering another loud cry, gave up his spirit. Suddenly, the temple curtain was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks were torn asunder, the tombs opened, and the bodies of many of God's people who had fallen asleep rose. And they, leaving their tombs, went, after the resurrection of Jesus, into the holy city, and appeared to many people. The Roman captain and the men with him who were watching Jesus, on seeing the earthquake and all that was happening, became greatly frightened and exclaimed, This must indeed have been God's son. There were many women there 
watching from a distance, who had accompanied Jesus from Galilee and had been attending on him. Amongst them were Mary of Magdala, Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. When evening had fallen, there came a rich man belonging to Ramah, named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. He went to see Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate ordered it to be given him, so Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen sheet and laid it in his newly made tomb, which he had cut in the rock. And before he left, he rolled a great stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary of Magdala and the other Mary remained behind, sitting in front of the grave. The next day, that is, the day following the preparation day, the chief priests and Pharisees came in a body to Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that during his lifetime, that imposter said, I will rise after three days. So order the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal him and then say to the people, He has risen from the dead. When the latest imposture will be worse than the first. You may have a guard, was Pilate's reply. Go and make the tomb as secure as you can. So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone in the presence of the guard. Chapter 28 After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary of Magdala and the other Mary had gone to look at the grave, when suddenly a great earthquake occurred. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and seated himself on it. His appearance was as dazzling as lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. And, in their terror of him, the men on guard trembled violently and became like dead men. But the angel, addressing the women, said, You need not be afraid. I know that it is Jesus who is crucified for whom you are looking. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said he would. Come and see the place where he was lying, and then go quickly and say to his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Remember, I have told you. They left the tomb quickly, in awe and great joy, and ran to tell the news to the disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Welcome, he said. The women went up to him and clasped his feet, bowing to the ground before him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers and sisters to set out for Galilee, and they will see me there. While they were still on their way, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. So they and the elders met, and after holding a consultation, gave a large sum of money to the soldiers and told them to say that his disciples came in the night and stole him while they were asleep. And should this matter come before the governor, they added, we will satisfy him and see that you have nothing to fear. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. This story spread widely. The people of Judea still tell it today. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus told them to meet him. And when they saw him, they bowed to the ground before him, although some felt doubtful. Then Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them into the faith of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to lay to heart all the commands that I have given you. And remember, I myself am with you every day until the close of the age. I recommend and invite you to listen to the whole gospel. Coming soon at 101chapters.com.